Hello everyone, this is Maurice from the Triple M Model Railroad. As you can see here, I actually have um, a lifelike Jeep 7 uh, Santa Fe scheme. And um, I thank Willis Hobbies for letting me work on this model. Um, a client came in today actually looking um, to get this running properly again and this is the same client that has the F7 Santa Fe um, that I've been doing some extensive work on um, now this one um, this is a regular DC powered as far as I can see and it doesn't work right it works you know intermittently you you touch it a certain way or run and then it don't run so it's it's something it's a little funky uh, with this uh, particular model and um, uh, so the first thing in order was to actually clean the trucks in the rear since they're the contact uh, for electricity and the front are for the motor now what I find interesting is that uh, if I touch this area if I just touch this motor here uh, or, or move this chassis a certain way it will actually turn on so let's take a look at that now I'll go turn this to full power and let's play around with it this thing will make me look stupid or not work at all. Yeah, now it's not working at all. Uh, yeah. Oops. Yep. Yeah, so I think there's a loose wire somewhere in there. So we're going to take this apart. And we're going to look, look, see, and give it a gander and see what's going on. I always find it very interesting how different manufacturers um, engineer their models. Um, you got all different assortment of designs, um, basically to convey the same function um, compared to each other. Now, I found the problem basically right away. Uh, this is a pan motor, if I'm not mistaken. And if you take a look here, that's the problem. That is a problem. Simple fix. Very simple fix. But I'm going to check over the other contacts, maybe in the trucks. And so uh, it should be fine because it looks like there's enough flexibility here to give this enough slack so that this here will not um, break off or wear out quickly. But this did for some reason. This this actually did. So okay, let's get to work and get this thing running. Upon further discovery, I found some more issues. This um, this ground wire, this black wire. At first, I was like, "Wait a minute, where did this wire come from?" And actually, this was it's a good thing. I took a picture of this before. It, it's coming from under the light, so this was connected under the light, and this blue wire here. That is actually part of the trucks, the power from the trucks. This is also pretty badly frayed. So I'm going to take this off and I'm going to actually resolder everything and it should be good as new. Okay, all right, so I resolded everything. I resolded the blue wire and the red wire and the black wire that goes to the lights or light singular 
All right, so let's put it on the test track and let's see what it does. All right, we're on the track. Let's put it to forward. And let's see what she does. Lights on. Actually, the lights came on before, but that was before the negative wire came loose. But you can hear the motor running. Come going instantaneously. Run it up full power. Lights nice and bright. It has good clean power. I think we're done. And I thought this was going to be a one and done uh, project. <laughs> Sometimes it's like that. You, know, you run into some issues with reassembly. And also, when I put it together, um, the model still wasn't running right. And that had a lot to do with the, um, the rear contacts. Um, for this model and I'm going to have to clean the innards of the wheels let me show you what I'm going to have to do and you see how I didn't really notice it that much but I was too busy concentrating on the flanges but look on the inside these are pretty oxidized or worn out or blackened so in the you know, I don't know if you can see the wipes the contact wipes in there but they're there they are there so I have to clean it thoroughly with some Everstall or excuse me I keep calling it Everstall it's Neverstall that's what it's called so I had to do that and the body screws um, obviously obviously this uh, model has not been taken apart before this is the first time but doing so, the screws, the thread on the screws kind of wore out on the plastic, uh, the inner threads. So what I did was I used some tacky glue and I ran the threads, here they are, the screws in them, you know, with the tacky glue and I'm going to let it cure. And once that is done, then these will actually screw in uh, much more firmly and hold in place yeah so a little tips and tricks so I'm gonna work on those trucks I'm gonna clean them up a little bit more um, so that it would actually you know the in the motor will run better um, it ran good at first but that's because it was basically standing still it's because these are not these doesn't move on their own on that you know they don't have any gearing or anything like that they're just static wheels with electric contacts on them that's all they are so all right let me get to it all right i went a little further i decided to take the trucks off and take a look at the wipers and i cleaned it with the um fiberglass brush so they're much brighter and cleaner and I also bent the contacts further out so they contact the wheels better than what they were before and I'm also getting a second shot at cleaning the wheels better you know sometimes you just gotta take things apart I was just afraid to take it apart because these old models after a while the plastic is very brittle and prying these things out you can be extremely careful so I was pretty lucky with that so I'm gonna further clean the wheels maybe touch this up a little bit more and then we reassemble it and we'll test it just look at the difference of using the um, graphite pen look at the difference I have to say it's killing me if I don't say it, but 
This definitely doesn't look scale. <laughs> oh, I can't help it. It's the river counter in me. I can't help it. I can't help it. All right. Yes, but this, as you can see, you get better light. Um, much better. Much, much better. So, yeah, this this little pen does wonders. It does some wonders, let me tell you. Uh, so let me just start with this one and uh, ready to assemble it and put this thing together and see this thing work properly. I have just went through what I thought I would did a video and I didn't even record it. <laughs> so here we go again. All right. The model is complete. Um, I It took a little bit more work than I anticipated, but we got it done. We went through it, uh, cleaned the wheels, cleaned the contacts, uh, adjusted the wipes, uh, the, uh, the power wipes to the wheels and solder some wires and yeah it was it was extensive so okay so the most important thing about getting these models to work is that you know that you nailed it if it runs at slow speed not fast speed but slow speed anybody can run at fast speed momentum will just you know just take over but if we run it at slow speed and if it does with minimum herky jerky, then you then you have done well. So let's see. Okay. Here we go. That's forward. And and reverse. Let's go a little slower. Let's see. All right, that's better. That's good. Uh, that's it. There we go. All right. She's all done. And she's ready to go back to the client. And the client would be very happy. He stated that this is one of his favorite engines like the other engine I'm working on, the F7. <laughs> I guess he's a Santa Fe fan. You know, he's close. You know, I'm a BSNF fan, so that's all good. That is all good. But, you know, actually this model reminds me of the Silver Streak model back in the um, late 70s, early 80s. I really wanted that model <laughs> when I was a kid. Anyway. Yeah, this is the project complete. I thank Willis Hobbies for letting me um, actually have the opportunity to work on this model and and repair it. And the client, I thank the client as well. So thank you everybody for watching. Please like and subscribe. And take care out there. Peace.